Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, this is part one of an introduction to control theory. Uh, this is in two parts. Uh, the first part will consider an uncontrol system and the second part will consider a system with uh, negative feedback. Um, a lot of control theory uses a lot of advanced maths. Math. Um, I'm going to show you in these two parts that you don't need advanced math to do uh, at least some level of control theory, um, but it'll give you an insight on the kinds of things that uh, we ask in control theory and the kinds of results we get. Okay, so let's begin then. So <laughs> I'm going to begin with a, a simple model. This is the model we're going to be using a lot. Uh, so what this is, is a simple, it's a tank, holds water. Okay, and there's a pipe that comes in, and there's a pipe that leaves. Pipe that leaves, uh, the water leaves there at a rate Q2, and the water that comes in, comes in at a rate Q1. Okay, so this is a tank that's filling up with water. Okay, it's filling up with water, um, but it also empties on the outlet pipe. Now, what we've got here is a uh, also a valve. Okay, there's a valve here that you can turn on or off. So you can turn this, okay, turn it on and off. So that's the valve. Uh, if you turn it off completely, of course the tank will fill up. In fact, it'll fill up until it overflows. Uh, however, if you open the valve, water will come out. Now I can walk, open the valve to varying degrees and I'm gonna use the symbol K to represent how much the valve is open. So if K equals zero, it's shut. And then K greater than zero, uh, open to varying degrees, okay? So I can control the, um, how fast the water comes out of that, uh, out of the tank. Um, now, one thing about this valve is that the, the rate at which the water leaves the tank is directly proportional to the height of water in the tank, right? So the higher the water in the tank, the more hydrostatic pressure, of course, and the faster the water comes out. Um, but it's limited by the valve, uh, this K value. And so the rate of which the water comes out can be controlled then by the valve, but it's still proportional to the height, okay? Okay, so that's the basic problem we're gonna start with. And a um, couple other things then. So um, we want to build a model of this, a computer model of this, all right? So let's introduce a couple of things here. Uh, first of all, this is going to be a cylindrical tank with a cross-sectional area A, and it's going to have a volume V. And we're going to use the volume for one small part, uh, and then we're going to focus on the height. But these, the units, um, for example, these flows, Q1 and Q2, is be something like liters per second, okay? So it's the amount of volume coming in per second into the tank. So the volume is changing, okay? So if the volume is changing, I can write the rate of change of the volume. And the rate of change of the volume is the difference between what's coming in and what's leaving, okay? So that's our first basic model. Now I want height though, so I will note that the volume of water in the tank is the height of the tank times its cross-sectional area, okay? All right. Um, if that's the case, then the rate of change of the volume, I can take this right, and, and then differentiate with respect to time. And I get, uh, I'll put it around this way, A, because A is a constant, so that doesn't change. But the height, of course, is dH by dt. Now that means I can take this and insert it into or replace this with that piece there, okay? So I end up with A dH by dt equals Q1 minus Q2, right? So that's the next thing we've got. So the model is starting to develop. Um, I'm going to, for the sake of we keep things simple, I'm going to assume the area is one, okay? So I'm left with dH dt equals Q1 minus Q2, all right? Um, now I know what Q2 is. Q2 is this one here. So I'm going to rewrite that. dH by dt equals Q1 minus uh, kH. This is our model, okay? That's our model, all right? Uh, Q1 is a constant. That's the amount of water coming in. Uh, H varies, of course. Uh, it fills up. 
So what I'm going to do actually, uh, in all cases, we can assume at time zero that the height of water is zero. Okay. So we're going to always start off with an empty tank. All right. Okay. Now, given this model, let me let me draw it again down here. Okay. So I'll draw it again here so you can see it. So this is our model. Okay. It's got a tank of water filling in at a rate Q1, emptying at the rate Q2, and there's a valve here that we can turn on and off to control how fast the water comes out. And uh, then of course, this is the uh, height, height of water. So what kind of questions can we ask of this system? Okay, um, number one is um, how does, the height of water vary in time. Okay, write that in time. So in other words, if I if I plotted a graph, time versus height, well, what would it look like? Well, I mean, I can give a good guess actually. Starting from empty, it'll look probably look something like that. So I want to know what what that function is. All right. The second thing is already implied actually by this curve, right? Does it, is there a steady state? A steady state level, oops, level of water. In other words, does it, um, if I start this running from an empty tank and I have the valve open, um, does the water continuously, um, fill the tank and never end, it never stops filling? Or does it reach a point where the level remains constant? And this graph here implies that maybe there is a point where it uh, remains constant. So is there a steady state level of water? Uh, the other thing that control engineers <laughs> love to ask is how fast, how fast does the water tank fill? Okay, for, let's say from empty. Okay, so we're starting from empty. How fast? So it's something to do with this curve, right? Um, what does it go here? It's basically how fast this, this thing is rising. Okay, how fast does it fill up? Okay. Uh, another question is how does the valve, in other words, K, uh, affect the level of water. Okay. This is important because if I wanted a certain level of water, what value, sh how, how would I change K? Do I turn it on? Do I turn it off? What do I do? Then lastly, which is a, probably one of the most important questions control engineers ask is, is the level of water stable with respect to perturbations. So in other words, if I took, um, if I took a cup of water, let's say I had a cup, if I took a, a cup, right? Or let's say I had a cup of water and I threw some water into the, into the tank, what happens to the level of water? If it's unstable, that would suggest that the water keeps on rising or keeps on, on, on emptying, or does it stabilize? And so is the, is the level of water in the tank stable to perturbations like that, that alter the level of water? So what we've got here then, a uh, couple of questions. How does H vary in time? Is there a steady state? How fast do things happen? How does some kind of input to the system, something that we can change, affect the level of water? And is, is the level of water stable to perturbation? So these are pretty basic questions that uh, control engineers will ask about such a system, okay? All right, so we'll go through these questions then answering uh, one at a time. So let's look at the number one first, okay? Um, so we have to remember that we have, this is our equation, 
it's that equation we, der we derived, okay? And we're gonna assume that at H zero, time zero rather, time zero, the tank is empty. Now this is a linear uh, differential equation, uh, has a standard solution, and I can just write that down here. I mean, you can get this solution by using, you know, Mathematica, or you can do it algebraically, or you can use symbol lab, etc. Lots of ways of doing this. Um, and I end up with this equation. Okay, oops. Okay, so you see there's an exponential component. Um, and then there's a constant in here, but that's uh, um, actually there's a mistake there. Sorry, that should be hey, that's a k actually. There's a constant term at the beginning. All right. So this assumes that the tank is initially zero. At the height of water, the tank is actually zero. Now I can run a, I can, you know, I could run a simulation. I could just, you know, get values for h using this equation. If I did that, I could plot time versus the height, all right? And I will actually get something. It does actually look something like that. Yeah, I can put in particular values, say k was two and q1 was six, all right? I can set values for k and q1. Note those are the only parameters in the problem, k and q1. Um, if you were to do this, you turns out that this asymptote, right? This steady state point is actually, um, in this case, is three. Okay, reaches a value of three. Um, if you look at this equation, right, you notice that time goes to, as time goes to infinity, okay, time goes to infinity, this whole thing goes to zero, okay, that goes to zero, all right. So we end up with at uh, t goes to infinity. This goes to Q1 over K, all right? Because that's a constant. Uh, and in fact, in our example, it's Q1 is six and K is two, which equals three. And so you will end up with a steady state level of three. In fact, this is the steady state level. We'll come back to that in a minute, okay? Um, in fact, we'll We'll talk to it now, in fact. Um, so is there, So that's one way we can determine the steady state just by taking t to infinity and we discover that we end up with a, with a constant. The other way to do it is to take the original differential equation, okay? Right, and we know that at steady state, right, the rate of change of the height is zero. So when I just set this to zero, okay? So that means Q1 equals kh. Therefore, h equals q1 over k, which is what we had before. Okay, so that's the steady state level level of of water. That's pretty easy to understand <coughs> why we get a steady state. So imagine we're starting off empty. Well, we're starting empty. It starts to fill up. As we start to fill up, the water starts to leave the tank. But because the height is low, it leaves the tank at a low rate. So at the beginning, so let's say at um, say at h equals uh, one, uh, q one is greater than q two. Okay, so initially it starts to fill, right? But eventually, as time time goes by, q two gets bigger and bigger and bigger until at some time, well, time goes to infinity. Oops, that should be time. See, so at time equals one, Q1 is greater than Q1. And then at time, as time goes to infinity, uh, Q1 uh, approaches Q2, okay? Now, if Q2 were ever to get larger than Q1, that would mean that the rate of water leaving would increase, and so would uh, the water would drop. If it drops below H, then Q2 is less than the rate at which water was coming in and it would fill back up. So this is already giving a hint that this system is actually uh, stable. Okay. Um, all right, so number two, second question was, um, well, we've done, we've answered this question, right? How does, how does H vary in time? We just computed the steady state. Next thing is how fast does the water tank fill from empty? 
So let me just draw that. So it looks something like that. Okay, so that's time. That's H for, um, oops, for height. Now there are various ways we could um, get an idea of how fast the thing is filling. And there are at least three standard measures we can use. One is called the uh, raise time, right? The rise time, right? Oops, that's a mistake. The rise time, right? The rise time, that's given the symbol TR. The other one is the settling time, TS. And the other one is a time constant which is a tau, okay? Some Greek symbol tau. Um, the rise time basically measures how long it takes to go from 10% of the height, final height, to 90% of the final height. So if I draw a line across here. So it basically measures this time here, okay? So you can imagine the faster it fills up, the, 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 the smaller the rise time, okay? Um, the settling time is how long it takes to get within 98% of the steady state, all right? So that's how long it takes to get within 90. So it's basically this time here, okay? From zero to 98%. The time constant we'll, we'll start with, that takes a little bit more explanation. And we'll come back to the rise time and settling time in a minute. All right, so... Let's, let's um, first um, normalize the height. So this height here, you know, the steady state height is this, this ratio here, which could be anything, right? Depending on the values of Q1 and K. So the first thing I'm gonna do is try to eliminate that by normalizing the height. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take H equals Q1 over K, one minus E to the minus KT. And I'm gonna divide both sides by Q1 over K, which is the steady state level, remember? And so that just cancels out. So this number now varies from zero to one, right? Assuming we don't, um, I mean, it can go above one if uh, we fill it above the steady state level, but because we're uh, filling from zero, it'll reach steady state and then it'll stay there. So this number will vary from zero to one, okay? And I'm gonna call this then uh, the normalized height, okay? So let's write that down. The normalized height is going to be one minus E to the minus KT. So all I've basically done is scale this. So what I've done basically um, is scale this so that it um, goes to a maximum of one. Okay, that's what I've done. So instead of going up to an arbitrary value, depending on K1, uh, Q1 and K, I'm gonna normalize it with respect to the steady state level so that it uh, hits one. Okay, it doesn't change anything else. It just scales things, makes something bigger or smaller, but doesn't change the actual shape of the curve. All right, okay. Um, okay, so with this diagram here, the, the one thing I'm gonna ask now is what is this slope here? Okay, what is that slope? So it's the slope, it's the initial slope at time zero. I could do that by differentiating Hn with respect to time and setting t to zero, all right? Uh, if I do that, I actually get k. If you differentiate this and set t to zero, uh, you'll get k. So this slope here, the slope is k, all right? Um, okay. Now this slope uh, k is often called the time constant. Um, so in fact, um, I'll write it out in two ways. So one over K is called the time constant or one over the time constant is K, okay? So this slope is actually one over tau, all right? So that's, this is the time constant. This is what we call the time constant. Um, so what is this time constant? Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna redraw this graph, all right? I'm gonna redraw this graph like this. Put this up here. Like, that's not a good one. Let's do that. Ooh, that's even worse. Terrible. Let's try this way. That's better. 
Okay. Uh, this hits one here. Uh, that's the steady state level. Uh, I'm going to take the slope up here. Okay, that's the slope. And remember, I said this slope we're going to define as one over tau, which is k. All right. Um, so let me draw this line across here. That's the steady state line. I'm going to extend a line down from here to the x-axis. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that the this distance is one because it goes from zero to one, okay? So we've got a triangle here, uh, distance one. I know what the slope is, and therefore I can compute this, all right? So if I have the slope and I have the vertical length of the uh, adjacent uh, edge, uh, I can compute the, the length of this. In fact, what it is is, of uh, course, is uh, the slope equals um, one over whatever this thing is here. I'll just call it x for now, okay? One over x. The slope, of course, is one over tau, which is one over x. Um, and therefore, x must equal tau. So actually, this is tau, okay? All right. Um, all right, so this is a, a, a special time then. We're gonna, we're gonna use this. This is again the time constant. Okay. Now what's special about it is uh, this point here. If I take this point across here, what is this number? It's somewhere between zero and one, I know. What is that number? All right, what is that number? Uh, so um, this number corresponds to the time that's elapsed, which is tau long. So if I write down um, the, equa the normalized equation again, hn equals one minus e. This time I'm going to use tau, okay? So it's minus t over tau. That's the same as e minus kt, okay? It's the same thing, all right? But I'm just using tau now instead of k, all right? Okay, so at this point here, oops, at this point here, uh, tau equals t, because this is the amount of time that's elapsed uh, in order to get to this point here. Okay, so if I set t equals tau, I get hn equals one minus e to the minus one, and that actually equals 0. 0.632. So this point here, is actually 0.632. And you can think of this as a percentage because you're going from zero to one. So um, what we can do, we make this statement at tau time, note that tau has units of time. At tau time, the tank was, let's say the water level is 63.2% towards, oh, let me see, 63% um, filled. Until the step, basically until the steady state, okay? Oops. Okay, so I know that I'm 63%, 63.2% from the steady state level. All right, so at tau time, I'm 63.2% away from the steady state level. Um, so um, maybe we can do an example. So let's say um, my K was 0.2. Just to, uh, just to make a point, the, the units of K will probably be something like per second. So the question then is how long does it take for the water level to reach 63.2% of its final height knowing K? Okay, since we know that tau is one over K, therefore tau equals one over 0.2, which equals five. Now with the units change, of course, uh, two seconds. So for this particular system, it'll take, it'll take five seconds, right? Five seconds to reach this point here in the curve, right? It can take five seconds, this is five seconds then, to reach this point here, which is 63.2% towards the steady state, all right? So that's what, so you can imagine that 
uh, the bigger this number, the slower the system. The smaller the number, the faster the system. So let's just that if tau is is big, system is slow. Okay, because it takes a longer and longer time to reach that sixty three point two percent. If tau is small, then of course the opposite system is fast. Okay, so let's say you know tau is you know point. If I drew this and towers, you know, 0 0.1 of a second, it's pretty much like that, right? You, you got a tiny 0.1 second here for tower, reaches 63.2% uh, really fast, okay? Really fast. Okay. So that's one measure. This is the, the tower value, right? That tower pops up in a lot of places uh, subsequently. Uh, it's... It's a, a value that uh, is um, used a lot. In, it pops up in many expressions. Um, okay, let's look at the other two. So the other two was the rise time. That was T R, right? So that's the time. So let's draw the thing. That's the time it, it takes to go from uh, ten percent to 90% of filling. So if I draw this across there, draw it across there, put those down, that's, that's the rise time, okay? That's basically the rise time, how long it takes to go from 10% to 90%. This is actually quite straightforward to compute um, because I know that HN equals, I'm gonna again work on the normalized equations, the easiest one to do. I'll use tau again, right? So it's minus T over tau. Uh, basically what I'm saying is if they know what, what I want to know is what's the time at point one of, oops, point one of the normalized height and what is the time it takes to reach point nine of the normalized time, okay. So essentially all I have to do is just rearrange these two. So I get tau on one side, or I get the time on one side, so I'll do that. So the time it takes to reach this point is minus tau log 0.9, okay? And the time it reaches to take this point, this time is minus tau log 0.1, okay? It's 0.9. So those are the two times. And then all I have to do is compute the difference between the two, okay? So all I did to get from here to here uh, was rearrange these equations, okay? So basically I moved the one over to there and then took the anti-log on both sides, all right? That's why you end up with 0.9 here because it's one minus 0.1. And for this one, when you take the one over there, you just get 0.1, okay? All right. Okay, so why don't we do that? Um, if you do that, if you, if you substitute this into there and this one into here, you end up with TR equals tau, it's not a very good tau, tau times 2.19722. Now, normally what people do is they round this up so that the rise time is tau times 2.2. In fact, they'll put it the other way around. Um, they'll actually do it this way we'll go 2.2 times tau, okay? And that's the rise time. So in the previous example, I had tau was five seconds, right? So tau was five seconds. So the rise time will be uh, whatever 2.2 is times, was it's like roughly 12 seconds, something like that, okay? So that's how long it takes for the system to go from 10% to 90%. Final one was the settling time. Okay, this is an interesting one. Um, so if I draw the graph again, I do that. Okay, actually, let me do it again. Okay, that'll do. Uh, the steady state level of water is here. That's the height, that's the time. You might be asking, you know, why don't we just compute the time it takes to reach steady state? Unfortunately, 
this is an asymptote here. It never actually reaches it. It only reaches um, the steady state, strictly speaking, at an inf infinite time, all right? Uh, and you can see that, you know, if I, if I write this, this equation again, I'll just do the normalized one. I mean, it never reaches, this has to reach, you know, one, okay? To be steady state, but it never actually reaches one. T has to go to infinity for this to reach one. So there never really is a point when we're at steady state. So we can't ask the question, how long does it take to get to steady state? Because that point is an infinite, <laughs> infinite time into the, into the future. So instead, what we do is we ask the question, how long does it take, for example, do it again. how long does it take, for example, for the line to cross so uh, a particular point on the steady st on the um, the curve. So often, what they'll do is they'll use uh, ninety eight percent. So they'll ask, when does this line, right, this line here, um, reach ninety eight percent of the steady state? Now I can ask that because there will definitely be a point when it passes ninety eight percent towards steady state, and so that time then is the settling time ts so this is ts right? that's the settling time um other people use other ones some people will use um 95 percent right but 98 percent is a common one okay all right so the question is how long does it take to reach 98 percent uh, this is pretty straightforward um basically what we're asking is because uh, you're dealing with a normalized one what we write what at what time is this equation satisfied when we reach 98 percent of the towards the steady state and all it takes is you just have to rearrange that and you end up with um if you end up with i'll do this log 0 0.02 Okay, because we get the point two two because that goes onto that side um and i'm going to take the log on both sides so I end up with uh, minus T over tau, okay? I can rearrange that um, so that I get T, I get T on one side equals 3.912 times uh, tau. Now, as before, they usually approximate this and they'll basically say, well, actually the settling time is approximately four tau right? that makes it much easier uh, to write down okay so it's for it's easy one to remember then as well so in the previous case we had <coughs> tau equal five seconds therefore the settling time will be 20 seconds okay so just to summarize here the three measures um what have we got we got tau we got the rise time we got the settling time. Now the settling time was 20 seconds. The rise time was about 12 seconds and tau was about five seconds. So these are all units of seconds, all right? So these are some metrics to give you an idea of how fast the tank is filling up, right? Okay. So that's done that, right? We finished with that. The next question was, which is way back here was, uh, so we've done how fast. Next one was, uh, how does the valve K affect the level of water? Okay. So now we're going to go back to the full one. Okay. So the full one was H equals Q1 over K times one minus E to the minus KT. Okay. And then the steady state was Q1 over K. If, if I increase K, K goes up, uh, then I think you'll agree that, hey, the steady state goes down, right? So if this K goes up, so that means this ratio gets smaller. So that means the steady state goes down. If the K goes down, then I think you'll agree the opposite happens, that the steady state level of water increases. Now, this is pretty straightforward to understand on the tank itself. So I've got my valve here, okay. And I've got water coming in here. 
at a rate of Q1, that's constant. And then the water coming out here is Q2, and that depends uh, on the level of water, okay, H. Now, if I were to open the valve a little bit, open the valve, all right, more water will come out. And opening the valve is equivalent to increasing H. And if I open the valve, more water comes out so that the level of water drops. So H drops, right? And that, that corresponds to this one, okay? On the other hand, if I close the valve, or cl not completely close it, but close it a little bit, that means I'm reducing K. Um, that means there's less flow coming out of the tank. So the tank actually will start to fill up a bit to reach the new steady state. And so the height goes up. All right, so that's that's good to know. All right, that matches our intuition and uh, matches what the equation says. The question is, can we be more precise about this? Um, well, <clears throat> I know that the steady state level of water is Q1 over K. Uh, what I could do is work out the, the sensitivity. I could work out how fast steady state level of K changes as a function of K. So all I have to do is differentiate this. And in fact, all I get is, is Q1 over K squared. Um, now, the only thing that's really useful here is this minus sign. This basically minus sign is telling me if I increase K, right, I decrease the steady state level of water, which is what we have here, right? Increase K, decrease water. Other than that, this equation isn't that uh, useful. There's a better way of doing this, <clears throat> and that is to look at the uh, logarithmic logarithmic uh, sensitivity, also called the gain in uh, control theory. Um, and here, we, instead of taking absolute derivatives, we take the log derivatives. And by that, I mean, we, we compute this. Okay, the logarithmic sensitivities. What on earth do, does this mean? Well, I can rewrite this, if you know a bit of calculus, this actually turns into, into this, okay? So the log terms are these ratios here, all right? Yeah, if you don't quite follow that, just go, go to a calculus book and you can look it up. Uh, and what you'll notice about here is that um, we're basically scaling the, the numerator and denominator by its corresponding steady state level. So I'm multiplying by K and I'm dividing by HSS. So this whole thing becomes unitless. Unit has no units, right? This has units. Oops, has units. This doesn't have units. There's no units. Um, another way to look at this, which is the the, real, the 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 best way to look at it, I think, for this for our purpose here, is you note this thing here. Actually, this one here. No, this one here, yeah, is easy to understand. That's a relative change. So it's basically DHSS divided by HSS, all divided by DKK. That's what we're looking at. Right. These are relative changes. Essentially, these are percentages. So it roughly equals the percentage change in HSS divided by the percentage change in K. All right, that's what the logarithmic gain gives us. So in other words, if uh, let's say, um, so we'll, we'll call this uh, G for, no, we'll call it L, L for the logarithmic gain, okay? So L for the logarithmic gain. And I'm gonna use a superscript and subscript. So it's the logarithmic gain of H with respect to K, all right? So we're looking at if K changes, what happens to H? Um, if L, HK say was two, for example, that means a 1% change in K gives a 2% change in the steady state level of uh, the water. So that's more um, relatable, right, than, than this thing here, right? Um, so, 
written, um, it basically tells us how K influences H, it's the strength of the influence, right? The bigger the number, the more influence K has over the height of water, right? Okay, so let's apply it then to the problem we had. So let's compute the logarithm again for, for our steady state, right? So first of all, we compute the derivative, right? We need to compute that first. So that was minus Q1 over K squared. Then I need to scale it. So that means multiplying by K divided by HSS. So that gives me minus Q1. That's just the derivative we just did. Times K, right? Now divided by HSS. HSS is this thing, right? So I have to divide by that, um, which is the same as going K over Q1. And I think you'll immediately see that cancels. Let me do a different color. That cancels, that cancels, that cancels with those two. So we end up with one. Right, so let's just summarize that. So L, H, steady state level of H with respect to K is, and of course there's a minus here, don't forget the minus, is minus one. Right, so that tells us that changes in K cause a proportional change in the level of water. Right, so if I make a 10%, if I were to increase uh, K by 10%, so I opened up the valve by 10%, that would mean that the height of water would also drop by 10%, right? And the drop comes from the, the minus one, all right? That's actually quite a useful thing actually to uh, have. Um, uh, it's quite a useful indicator of uh, how sensitive something is, a little uh, using the log logarithmic gain because it basically gives us ratios of percentages, which is much more relatable than, um, you know, something like this thing, which isn't. Okay. So that's so uh, how, so we've just gone up to, this is a long lecture, I know. Um, we've done this one, now we're onto this last one. This is the last bit now, right? Okay, so it's about stability. Uh, it's about stability. So stability, this won't take long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw my tank again. Okay, and I got a pipe coming in, it's Q1, stuff leaving Q2, and I got my valve there, which is K, and I got some water in the tank. The question I want to ask you is I'm going to let's 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 assume the system is at steady state. So first of all, assume system is at steady state. Okay. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is add a oh let's let's do a remove, shall we? Um, remove a cup of water, it's a cup. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a bunch of water and take it out, right? So that means that the level of water will slightly drop, okay? So it'll slightly drop. The question is, what happens? Right, this is a question of um, stability. What happens to the level of water? Uh, does it continue dropping? Uh, does it suddenly start to increase and overflow the tank? Or does it uh, go back? Does it basically re re recover and go back to the original steady state? Okay. I mean, I think we know what the answer is, and that is it basically recovers and goes back to the original steady state, um, meaning the system is stable. This system is actually stable. The question is, how can we prove it? So um, how can we model the, you know, the additional removal of, of a cup of water? Well, what I can do is, um, let's write down the differential equation for the rate of change of the height of water, right? Just the height. So 
So let, let's start off with the steady state height. Then I'm going to add, you know, add or remove water. It doesn't matter whether I add or remove water. So that'll give me the new rate of change of the height. And this will equal Q1 minus K, <coughs> minus K times H. But H is the steady state level plus or, or, or minus the water I added or took away, okay? So this is the equation that applies when I just added a cup of water to the system. So I can multiply and apply these out. Okay. Um, I can multiply these out. Now, of course, this bit here and this uh, is the steady state component. And these basically equal zero. Okay, they equal zero, so they disappear. So cancel, cancel. And so I end up with D delta H, oops, delta H DT equals minus K delta H. Now this equation here is actually an exponential decay. So if I were to do, if I were to write in time what's happening. So if I wrote, so that's the, that's the steady state level of okay, water, all right? And then let's say throw in a cup of water. So that means the, say the height increases a bit. What this equation tells us, this one here, is that I basically get an exponential decay. Oops, that's not a very good one. Exponential decay back to HSS. Basically the delta, and this is the delta basically, this piece here is the delta H. That basically, this equation here tells me it decays to zero. I know decays because it's got a minus in front of it. And so this proves to me that this system is stable. All right. Uh, if I made a, a negative change instead of a positive change, this one becomes a plus and therefore uh, it moves back up. So basically if I did a, um, a negative change, uh, basically pushing it down and then it recovers like that. Okay, so whether I, I add water or remove water, the system will restore itself back to the original steady state. Hence, we say this system is stable. Okay, all right, so that basically completes this uh, talk. Um, uh, so maybe a brief summary. Um, the time dependence was Q1 over K1 minus uh, E to the minus KT. We defined a new new uh, term called tau, which was the time constant, which was one over K is the time constant. And there are various things you can do with the time constant. You can look at the 63.2% filling point, the um, rise time or the settling time. They're all in terms of, um, tau. We can also look at the steady state level of H, which was Q1 over K. Um, we, and then the last thing we can look at the stability. stability. And also we looked at a parameter or system, system sensitivity. Okay, so system sensitivity. So those are the things we looked at. One, two, three, four, five, all right. Okay, now that's the end of part one. Um, I'm just gonna give a brief mention of what's coming up in part two. So in part two, we're gonna make a, a modification. We're gonna still have the same tank model, okay? Pipe coming out, all right, pipe coming in. Um, and Q1 comes in as before. Q2 leaves as before. We we'll still have our valve here. And there's gonna be a water level. The big difference though is we are going to have a float, right? That rises up and down, okay? This float is connected in some way to another valve on the inlet, okay? And so as the float goes, if the float goes up, because it's starting to fill, it'll close the valve, right? If the float comes down, it'll open the valve. So the idea is in this way, maybe we can um, have more control over the height of the water, okay? So that's what we're going to do uh, in the part two. Okay, bye now. <laughs>